Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. This is a closing market wrap for the week ending uh, Friday, March 20th, 2020. Uh, quick recap of what happened today. Well, essentially we closed right at those lows uh, from uh, the last week or so. Let's talk about that. That was Friday. Here, let me pull up another chart here. What I had to do is update my NQ chart. Uh, this program here will... Uh, once the futures rolled, remember today was uh, quadruple witching. That's where we had the volatility. Let me find the old chart. Okay, there it is. This is the NQ uh, 60 minute I was working off of, uh, and they were the uh, the March contracts, which uh, stopped trading today. So up until today, uh, we had it uh, right there. There was that trend line I mentioned, and I, you know it's weird because I still had this. Uh, showing earlier it was still showing the prices uh, you know on the chart reflecting current prices but uh, no longer so what I had to do here and no big deal is I, I rolled over to this one and uh, as I had mentioned earlier in the day uh, this is the uh, the June contract the next forward contract for NQ and so now that's the continuous contract so there's that same level the numbers may have changed because when these futures roll or at least this program rolls in the new contract they're going to use uh, the current prices and that's it so that was uh, remember that was last Friday we first hit that right here and we hit it almost every single day there was a little bear trap that led to that 10 plus percent rally let's measure it out here that was uh, better than 10 it was showing almost uh, about almost 13 uh, percent from low to high and that may be it I'll tell you that may be it for the bear market rally they certainly sold it hard today so uh, as I mentioned this morning, we had a gap above the trend line, but then we failed back below the trend line. And the chart that I posted earlier, which again, that one's not populating anymore uh, with the newer prices, but I gave you triple, triple uh, support, a confluence of support. Uh, I believe it was right around here. These are just giving you the comparable levels. This was that S1, T1 level, and that was defined by, you can see it well on these uh, new one here, they were sort of these lockdown periods, future lockup and lockdown periods, uh, where the futures hit that 5% limit in the Globex session. That's the after hours trading, uh, you know, outside the regular session. These are the Globex futures right here. And so that's it. You know, leave everybody guessing. Um, I told you in the in the last update that hey, good time to, you know, keep things light heading into the weekend. You have two nights overnight risk. Uh, certainly have one heck of a fade today from the open. You know, they turned around and faded. Uh, what is that about? Uh, almost a 10% fade on the queues. But uh, it's again par for the course with the volatility lately. And what it did is brought us down to support, not below, but exactly. Look at that. You can't even make this stuff up. Parked it right on that support level again that was just a little whipsaw uh, bear trap so uh, like I said probably best to just pick it up see where things are at next week um, you know if I had to bet one way or another I'd probably say down but you can't do that you can't you know can't go long at support when you're still very oversold I'm, I'm sorry um, uh, go short it is always a gamble uh, you want to see that support taken out and uh, maybe it gets taken out next week maybe we go the other way I can tell you we'll gap one way or the other and that's why I you know I feel good going home uh, flat the indexes uh, this weekend uh, pick up and see what happens next week. Um, let's look at SPY or ES, and then we'll look at the uh, index uh, ETFs. This is ES, the S&P 500 futures, and so what you have there, uh, a couple things. You had a little minor uptrend line just like that one on uh, QQQ and IWM and RTY that I showed earlier today. So that was taken out earlier in the session. I know it's hard to see on this chart. Let's see, here we go. Got some wonky little candles going there, but that's it. So we took out that trend line there, pretty much in all the indexes, small caps, large caps, and that that triggered. You know, the sell-off had already started. We had a bounce several times on this trend line today, if you can see there, and then boom, closed right back down to that low from, uh, that was the 18th, was that last Friday as well? Let's see. No, that was Wednesday. That was Wednesday when the uh, ES hit that low. So we have a better definition. That's why I keep focusing on NQ, uh, because again, that's where the traders continue to uh, uh, step in and uh, and buy at that uh, those recent lows. Um, but the thing about support is, uh, the more you knock on it uh, from above, uh, the greater the chance is. That w especially once it breaks, then you're going to have just a, a pretty impulsive drop down. So we'll see. Go go the other way. They can defend it. So I can talk on this all day long, but we're not going to know until next week. All we know is today, um, you know, it looked like we might get a little more upside this morning. We had taken out the trend lines, but then that failed. And most importantly, like I said, when those uh, the confluence of support, especially the you know, 
triple um, support right there was taken out. That opened the door for this move down. Let's look at RTY. That's a small cap ETF. Same story. Uh, again, that was a level right here, this uptrend line. Uh, said so that would be a, you know an objective place to put stops below and you also had the 1056 former first target which was hit back here uh, and both were taken out at the same time so it's all the better when you're trading um, when you have not not one but two support or resistance levels that come in close uh, proximity you know the traders did step in bought it a few times but once it broke you can see that uh, support became resistance one two three failed candle, three failed attempts to run back and, and regain uh, 1056, and then boom. So IWM still off the lows, um, whereas uh, QQQ or NQ, they parked it right on those lows. Now let's look at the uh, ETFs, for those who trade that. Uh, remember, you're going to not see as many reactions here. This is a 30-minute chart of QQQ. We were just looking at the 60-minute charts on the futures because this is not showing. We, we can see today's after-hour session, this shaded gray area right here. It's real thin because uh, you, you're going to trade it's long now. Uh, we're going to shut down for the day soon. Uh, well, I should say we've only been trading a little while after the market's been closed, but uh, there's that little false breakdown that uh, the bear trap on NQ, but right back to it. So... Uh, you know, I don't know. Some people might say, hey, is this an inverse uh, head and shoulders pattern? It could be. Uh, that's one thing because those are bottoming patterns that come at the end of an extended downtrend. So that's something to watch. If it is, that's going to be your neckline there. And uh, you still need to form a right shoulder on it. Um, you know, ideally, you don't want to see it gap above and not have a right shoulder put in. So again, we'll, we'll just have to pick this up on Monday. But uh like I said, uh, pretty key support in the fact that the market fell. Remember, all week kind of leaning towards that scenario uh, that we'd bounce, or you know, because of the excessive, uh, the excessive uh, put buying, uh, put to call ratio, the extremely high VIX, everything else. And uh, you know, last time we had a short trade on QQQ it was right here. We closed it out uh, about a week ago and just sidestepped this mess and actually, you know, able to you know profit on it. Some some back and forth longs and shorts but uh, that's it uh, let's try not to make too much more complicated than it is it's just a consolidation that will sooner or later go one way or the other and uh, uh, like I said I think the safe bet is to uh, let let's see how this is resolved next week we're still coming off you know very oversold conditions especially on the weekly chart um, we're still coming off uh, high put to call rate readings. I'll check that over the weekend, see where the final numbers came in today. Uh, again, it was quadruple witching, so they would have cleared some of that out. Let's look at the VIX real quick, see what happened there. The VIX uh, did, like I said earlier, uh, has come back in quite a bit. And uh, let me go to a let me go to this 30 or 60 minute chart right here. There it is. You can see we had this bearish rising wedge pattern with negative divergence and there was your sell signal. So the VIX is actually broken down and that's one thing that could indicate uh, a, a bounce next week in the market but not necessarily. Remember I showed you in previous videos how the VIX topped back in 2018 long before the stock market did. So I'll maintain what I've said before. And the VIX can do what it wants. Uh, it could certainly go up more but I think that's still at this point in time uh, it's still way too elevated uh, up at those extreme highs and does not offer an attractive risk reward. So all that's saying is again not that it can't go up but the downside risk is, or downside loss potential from these levels uh, is is um, yeah, higher in my opinion, and the probability of that happening than than another you know big move up. So uh, that's the VIX. Remember, times are different right now. As ugly as 2008 was, uh, you know stores were still open, people were still shopping. Uh, yeah, everybody was scared because the market was dropping. But that's it. That was just a you know. Uh, you know, just an unwinding of a, of a credit bubble and, uh, you know, some scary times there with the banks and all that. But uh, again, this is a different story. So we're, we're in kind of uncharted territory here. And uh, like I said, there's nothing even remotely close that has improved from the fundamental outlook. Um, it's only things, you know, only seem to be getting worse at this point in time here in the U.S.
Um, I will follow up with a video. I start. I did do the video today. I told you guys that I'm working on um, breaking down a few videos uh, covering the various asset classes. I did the stock market today. I followed up, and I was. I need to get that one out to you guys. I did one on bonds, and I covered treasury bonds, corporates, uh, high investment grade corporates, low grade or, or junk bonds. You know, uh, low grade corporates. Um, and then uh, I wanted to get to the municipal market, and I, I didn't get to that. I was going to talk about California, uh, what the Calif you know, that's just one example, uh, the municipal bonds there, and all the impact that uh, coronavirus and, you know, the lockdown in California is going to have. Uh, as I mentioned, California is the, uh, I think, it's the world's fifth largest economy. So we talk about, you know, Italy. Uh, you know, shutting down recently. Um, Italy is much smaller, considerably smaller, their entire economy than the state of California. So as in California is, again, just one example here in the U.S. So uh, like I said, the impact here is going to be tremendous. I could talk all day long about that. And then, you know, CalPERS, which I always pick on as the, you know, kind of poster child for underfunded pension plans, the, the, the huge issue facing this country. And, um, uh, there, there's no way out of that. So where it goes is, you know, I was going to talk on that, and I didn't cover it in the last video. So you know, the outlook for the California California municipal bond market is lousy. How is that going to? How are they going to pay um, for this? They're going to have to tax the those that have um, to take care of the uh, you know uh, all the retirees and the pension system. In other words, taxes on the wealthy who buy those municipal bonds are going to have to go up uh, sooner or later to pay for the massive pension shortfalls and CalPERS uh, to pay for the retirees, you know, that are drawing the retired, uh, you know, police officers and, and, and teachers and all those on the uh, on that pension system and, and many others like it throughout the country. So we're uh, looking at some bad stuff here coming up. Uh, the lower the market goes, the worse those situations get. Um, but uh, the more that happens, the more the government's going to throw any and everything they can at, at this situation and print money. So the bottom line, it's you know dangerous times right now uh, in the stock market for sure. I'm going to wrap this up here because I want to see what happens next week. Uh, I did cover longer term charts in the uh, video for uh, in the beginning of the next video I'm about to publish on the bond market talking about SPY being well, well below its, uh, you know, bull market trend indicators and bull market trend lines. Uh, QQQ also below that now, poised to close the month below unless we have a big rally next week. So again, that's all covered in the, in the video that I'll follow up with on the uh, fixed income. And after that, at some point, uh, either over the weekend or uh, early next week, I'll get out the, uh, the follow-up videos that will cover uh, gold, the precious metals, because that's one area we might have an opportunity here uh, to actually make some money in, the, uh, you know, in this bear market that's probably going to continue for quite some while. Uh, as well, I'll cover currencies, commodities, crude oil, uh, coffee, sugar, uh, ag various agricultural commodities. I also think there's going to be some opportunities there uh, to actually make money even in a bear market. And then I'll also touch on uh, Bitcoin, which I kind of put as its own little separate asset class now. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up here. Keep this one short. Get this video out to you guys. And uh, again, pick it up next week. But like I said, they, the most important takeaway is they close the market right on support. Um, but it's been consolidating for a week or so, so that has helped to alleviate some of those over overbought, uh, I'm sorry, oversold conditions. Uh, but we are still oversold, you know, it closed the week down you know, with the RSI here at 21.22. Oh, and a quick look, of course, at the weekly charts. I should have done that earlier. Uh, SPY closed the week uh, just shy, uh, just below the bottom of that, uh, you know, at the time it was a neck support. Now it is, you know, we're already down through it next support targets and we pretty much consolidated all week on there and even went to the top of it so it did certainly serve its purpose it acted we had a reaction there trading all week uh, within this support zone or right on there and closed right down a hair below it uh, that opens up to my um, you know opens the door should we gap down or move down any lower or considerably lower I should say next week that will greatly increase the chances we're just going to come on down here to that next bear my minimum bear market target on SPY at 212 ish right there and that would be a drop of about another seven and a half percent on the S&P 500 whereas QQQ closed uh, below that uh, 173 ish 
support level uh, and uh, just slightly not by a very wide margin but again uh, much more downside on QQQ and uh, we should uh, that should take us down here about the same thing about seven seven and a half percent so there's your uh, if nothing else there's your downside targets if we have more follow-through selling next week and uh, like I said being that we closed pretty much on support those you know I showed you on NQ and even the QQQ daily uh, we cannot rule out uh, more upside uh, next week so like I said I don't like coin toss out trades so um, I'm very feel very good for the first time in a while going home uh, without any positions and uh, see what see what happens next week and then we'll go from there and uh, maybe maybe even add on some a uh, couple new official trade ideas this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great weekend.